Good morning, church. It's wonderful to be with you this morning, uh, again in this video form. Uh, I know you're not in the room with me, but uh, I pray that you sense uh, the Lord's presence with you wherever you are. Uh, would you join me as we just sing praises unto our Lord and Savior who deserves it today, this Mother's Day. Um, good morning to all you mothers out there. I pray that you are blessed. Uh, just let me pray over you as one of your pastors, especially for mothers in this special time. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the grace and blessing that you give us each and every day. But right now, I want to thank you for the blessing that is our moms. Uh, I pray that uh, you are just uplifting them in this point, at this day, Lord, because they've done so much in this time. The fact that they're now school teachers, that they are now uh, taking care of their children 24-7 and, and all of that. Uh, you've given people strength in the time when they need it most, and we know that. So we pray once again, fill our mothers with strength, with great uh, compassion and power that can only truly come from you, Lord God, and just use them as your beacon of hope and peace in the families. Uh, Lord Jesus, we pray a blessing over the full family. Let everyone feel your grace today as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, speaking of God's grace, let's sing to him about his amazing grace. Of sin and darkness Whose love is mighty And so much stronger The King of glory The King above all kings Who shakes the whole earth With holy thunder And leaves us breathless In awe and wonder The King of glory above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place and you would bear my cross. You laid down your of our praise who brings a chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in our love is brilliance the king of glory the king above our king Sing to him, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. You would bear my cross. Oh Lord, you laid down your life. I would be set. for all that you've done for me and worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. This worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. And you would bear my cross. Set free, oh Jesus, to sing for all that. 
that you've done for me. Strength arise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength arise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. I got you reign forever. I hope I strong deliver. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak, and you comfort those in need, and you lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. I got you reign forever. I hope I strong deliver. Comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't go in. You're the defender of you comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Yes, we'll wait upon the Lord. Yeah, we'll wait. Lord, and strength the rises. We wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Yes, Lord, we wait upon you. We need you in our lives, Lord. We need you in this moment. We need you where we are. Surround us, we pray. And on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so 
are cherries, the old rugged cross. Till of the hope is at last I lay down. And I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me for the dear lamb of god left his glory above to bear it to dark calvary Trophies at last I lay down. And I will cling to the old rugged cross and then exchange it someday for a crown. In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine. A wondrous beauty I see For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died To pardon and sanctify me So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down And I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange someday for a crown To the old rugged cross I will ever be true it's shame and reproach gladly bear Then he'll call me someday To my home far away Where his glory forever I'll share So I'll cherish the old rugged cross trophies at last I lay down and I will cling to the old rugged cross and then exchange it someday for a crown and I'll cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Worship. 
worship you, I worship you. Sing again, you are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, yes, I worship you. You are here, working in this place, yes, yes, and I worship you. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Again, yes, you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. Stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you work. And even when I don't feel it, you work. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you work. And even when I don't feel it, you work. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. It you work, and even when I don't feel it, you work. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop, cause you are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper. Light in the Miracle worker, promise keeper, 
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty King, we just want to worship you for who you are. I thank you that you do make way, that you do keep your promises. We need that light in the darkness sometimes, Lord God, and it's you. It's always you. So I thank you, Lord God, that you are illuminating our hearts and our minds to your truth over and over again with each moment. We cling to you now in this time. Amen. Good morning, church. We're so excited that you could be here with us today. We have a few announcements for you, um, one of which is our EGCC Kids Facebook page. If you have kids, you'll want to jump on that as because next week we will be um, starting up our new curriculum, which will be video-based, and we'll be posting it once a week. You'll want to really jump in on that. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're excited to be doing something new for all of you. As well as on Tuesday mornings, if you are a youth, um, jump on our Instagram page at 10 a.m. on Tuesday mornings, and we'll love to chat with you. We've been going through the book of James. And if you're a senior high on Thursday nights, we continue that discussion with some questions and some videos um, just about what James is really talking about and how we can apply it to our lives. And if you are um, interested in our Bible studies, we do that on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. with Pastor Brent through Facebook Live, and we'd love to have you join us. As well as Friday mornings at 10.30 a.m., we have our Facebook Live devotional with either Pastor Adam and myself. And this week is a special week. We are excited to celebrate Mother's Day. We know that we can't do this together, but we want to encourage all of you moms that even though Mother's Day looks different this year, that we are with you, that we are celebrating you, and that we want to encourage you in this time. Maybe you won't be able to be with your kids this week, or maybe you've been home and you've been homeschooling as well as working, and it's just been a lot of a, a different time and maybe a little chaotic for you. But we want to say that from the staff and leadership team at EGCC that we are thankful for you and we love you and we care about you and happy Mother's Day. So let me pray for all of you moms before I had um, I give it up to Pastor Brent. God, we thank you for every one of the moms who are represented in our church. And God, we just pray for this time for all of them. God, whether they're away from their kids or whether they're um, taking on a new role of being a teacher and a mom, we just pray for um, guidance through this time and patience and love and that they feel appreciated, God. So we just thank you for all of the ladies in our church who have been called moms. In your awesome name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Adam, and thank you, Pastor Jess. Just appreciate this morning you helping us out with the worship and with the announcements in our prayer time today. Uh, I want to welcome you this morning. It's good to be with you again on this Sunday morning, but especially uh, this Mother's Day morning. So uh, again, you want your pastors to be honest with you. You're uh, sitting at home with a cup of coffee now, uh, perhaps in your pajamas, and you're saying to yourself, Pastor Brent, uh, when did you remember that it was Mother's Day today? And so the official answer is um, that I knew it was Mother's Day all along and have not been fooled by this day at all, despite the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, the honest answer is it occurred to me Monday afternoon while I was working on a sermon for this Sunday, by the way, another sermon that you'll have to wait now a week to hear, but while I was working on that and uh, about two thirds, three quarters finished, it dawned on me Monday afternoon that it's Mother's Day and that especially this Mother's Day, I should have a sermon that deals with the theme of Mother's Day uh, at least as best as I can and to move away from the COVID-19 crisis uh, to move away from pandemic talk. I was listening to a, a radio show. It just reminded me of something else. I'll get back to Mum's Day in a moment here. But I was listening to a radio show from my hometown in Sudbury, and they have uh, COVID-free Fridays. So while you're listening uh, to their radio station, they are not allowed to mention pandemic or virus or COVID-19. It just, it's not allowed. 
Um, so I'm going to try to do that today in the message and not talk about any of that stuff and just focus on moms. Actually, more important, the love of God, how that's illustrated in in the love of our mothers or in the love of our parents. But I did officially remember, uh, you know, from ancient times past, but honestly, I remembered Monday afternoon. The worst thing about all that is this, is while I'm confessing this to you, my uh, wife is watching this and she will be shaking her head right now and saying, yeah, that's, uh, that's probably true. The good news is that, yes, I took care of the gift and I took care of the card. So, you know, be able to smooth that over as best as possible. But it did escape me for a little while that it's Mother's Day this week, I guess in the midst of what's going on, and uh, that I should prepare something for that. So I have something for you today. But before I share that with you, uh, we're going to do an honesty check. I just did an honesty check with you, and I let you know that, yes, I kind of forgot it was Mother's Day coming up this week, but kind of didn't. So let's see how you're following government regulations by a show of hands. By a show of hands, right? Let me know how many of you are going to be social distancing today from your moms, or how many of you are going to be breaking the rules, so to speak, by going to be with your moms or your grandmas or, you know, having some kind of family gathering. So just by a show of hands, this way, uh, you know, it's not out on uh, the World Wide Web. Okay, so you've done your honesty check. However you celebrate Mother's Day today, I hope you have a really good time, whether it's in person or it's uh, FaceTime or whatever else you're doing, maybe an old-fashioned phone call. I hope that you can make it the best Mother's Day possible in 2020. And perhaps this year will just help us celebrate future Mother's Days in ways that we are maybe a little bit more appreciative of being able to gather and be family and just to hug and love. And again, right, something good can come from this as well. So it's Mother's Day today. Celebrate that as best you can. If you haven't celebrated it yet, let me give you the text this morning. My text for you is found in Matthew 23 and verse 37. And like last week's text in this way, like last week's text, it might seem like it's a bit of a stretch. How are you going to talk about Mother's Day from this text? Just like last week, I spoke to you about having a safe place, Jesus in the middle, right, of your home from, you know, Resurrection Sunday. And uh, I hope I got there for you, and I'm going to try to get there today with uh, the text that we have. So let me read it for you, reading from the New International Version, and it says this, Jesus is speaking, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. Let me read it again because it's really short. Matthew 23, verse 37. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Now, you might ask the question, and it's a fair question, what does this passage of Scripture have to do with Mother's Day? Well, nothing specifically, but as we dig into the text, I think I will be able to prove to you that you see something significant here that is found in the love of our moms, our dads as well, of course, our parents, the love that we're looking for in our homes. And we want to celebrate that today on Mother's Day. But by looking at a text where, where Jesus laments the fact that he wants to love the people of Jerusalem, the people of Israel, he really wants to wrap his arms or wrap his wings around them and protect and care and love for them. But unfortunately, they're unwilling participants and they miss the love of God. And how tragic that is, is to think that you would miss the love of somebody that truly wants to love you. So I chose the passage this morning because I believe that it truly expresses the love of the Father, the love of the Son, the love of the Godhead 
for the people, uh, not, just the, not just Israel, as was the context, not just the church, which uh, might be more applicable to us, but to society as a whole, to, to humankind as a whole. This isn't necessarily just for God's chosen people, but I think this is a message of hope for all of us that God wants to reach out and love all of us. And he depicts himself here as a mother hen. Now, that's probably the first thing that I struggle with just a little bit. I am so used to, to God being portrayed in, in so many different ways. Um, for those of you that have been following me in Bible study, we've talked about God being our rock and our fortress, right? He's our refuge. He's our safe place. Um, we know from other passages in the Bible, you know, that he's a good shepherd, that he's the almighty, that he's the all powerful one. You know, we see passages in Isaiah about eagles swooping and those kinds of things. And all of a sudden we get arrested here in Matthew 23 and Jesus refers to himself and to the love of the Godhead in this way, in a very practical way as a hen that would like to gather her chicks underneath her wings in order to love and protect them. Now, that doesn't seem um, terribly brave. Uh, hens don't strike us as particularly strong uh, animals. But again, the hen has the motherly instinct to protect those that are closest to her, even in what we might call you know, a feeble way in the barnyard, so to speak. But, but Jesus is very comfortable in referring to himself in that way as a hen that wants to protect the chicks, to gather them to himself, to his breast, to his love, to his heart, to a place of protection. So Jesus sees himself and depicts himself as this hen. He longs to love and protect his people, to save his people. But unfortunately, the vast majority of the people that he refers to here, and particularly it's the city of Jerusalem, uh, they're not interested. We would say more often than not, almost without exception, that there's no love like that of a mother's love. But I would also suggest to you today that there is no love like the love of God. And that whatever earthly love there is, it is but a reflection of the Father's love that has found its place in our hearts. John writes to us in his epistles that uh, we love because God first loved us. That we understand that God is the source of all love. That without God, we can't even know what love is. And that's why in, in 1 John 4, it, it has that verse that says this, for God is love. Now, John isn't trying to describe everything that God is there. That's, that's not a 100% description of, of who or what God is. But it's a significant part of who God is and, and how he acts and everything that he does whether it's creation, uh, whether it's salvation, um, that it it's always comes from a source of, of love that is in the Father's heart. So we're going to look at the love of the Father today. And uh, as, as Jesus demonstrates that to us in this passage, and then, you know, try to translate that to our own homes and the kind of love that we should have in our homes. So what can we learn about a mom's love or a father's love or a parental love or the love that should be found in our homes. I think this passage tells us some pretty interesting things. So let me dig it out for you. Point number one is this, is that despite God's great love, his amazing love, people are sometimes still difficult to reach. You will notice here in, in verse 37 that it says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. In some other tr English translations, it says this. It says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And I think why some of the English translators put the word oh in there is to, to pick up the pulse or the heart of Jesus here. That <clears throat> it's a lament, really. He is saying, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, right? Like, how I have tried to reach you, 
uh, not just in this day and age, but, but how God has tried to reach Israel, you know, in the millennial past, that he's tried to reach out to them and he's tried to love them. And God has demonstrated his love to the people of Israel in so many ways, going right back to the beginning in Genesis 12, starting with Abram and eventually establishing the, the, the people of Israel, the people of God, through their kings and their prophets, through their ups and their downs, through their successes and their failures, um, God has reached out to, to this, this people in so many wonderful ways. His love has never waned. He has shown patience and grace that's unimaginable. And so we see here in Jesus' words, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that he's got this heart for a people He's got this love for a people that won't love him back. And so we are seeing the love of Christ manifested here through just a few words. And yet as he continues on in his, his uh, lament, I'll call it a lament, we see that the people like rebuff him. They're, they're, they're not really interested in the love of God. They're certainly not interested in the person of Jesus Christ as, as God here in the flesh. Um, and yet, despite the rejection that Jesus is experiencing, and we're only a few chapters from, you know, his crucifixion and his death, um, he just loves them. He just loves them. And so I thought about that in the sense of the hen, right? He, he's like a hen, and he wants to gather the people of Israel, the chicks, to his heart and to himself. And that reminded me of the love of a mother. I, I, I don't know if it's fair to guys. I don't know if it's fair to dads, and I'm a dad, so I'm, I'm speaking about myself. I don't know if it's fair to say that moms love greater, bigger, stronger than dads. I don't think that, that's a fair statement at all. I think there are differences in, in how we reflect the love of God through, uh, through a mom or through a dad, through the gender differences and all of that stuff, right? There's a lot packed in there, but I'm not a psychologist, so I'm not going to sort all that out for you. But we do love differently. But there is something about the nurturing love of a mother and a mother's desire to protect the kids and to gather them to themselves and to, to create the rules, right? Why do we have the rules? The rules are to protect the kids. The rules suggest that uh, the more rules I have, the more I love you, that I just have your best interests in mind. And sometimes the rules might feel a little bit suffocating. They might feel a little over the top, uh, but mom really loves you or dad really loves you, right? We really love you. There's this, there's this heart that parents have for their kids. I think you see it illustrated first and best when you take a little baby that's just come out of the womb and you take that little baby who's just had its, its umbilical cord severed, maybe even not yet, and, and the nurse or the doctor takes that little baby out of the womb and places, places the child on his or her mom, on her stomach, or, or, or on her chest, or up by her face. And when you see the pictures, when you see that first picture of the mom looking at that little baby, that, that life, that child that they just gave life to, there, there is something about the glow. There is something about the moment. Now, think about this, guys. I want the guys to think about this. Your wife has just come through some, some terrible pain in giving birth, uh, sometimes very difficult. And yet when that little baby is placed on mom and up near mom, regardless of how uncomfortable the birth has been, there's almost an immediate bond. I mean, it just happens like that. There's a look and that's my girl or that's my boy, that's my child. And the love bond begins right from there. And I think we see this reflected in Jesus' lament that, that as God in the flesh, as the creator, as the one who covenanted with the people of Israel, the one that breathes life into all of us, there is this love and this passion that he has for all people. 
and that he wants us all to be reconciled to himself. He wants us all to be in relationship with him because he loves us so dearly. It, 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 in a sense, it is like that he has given birth to us, right? He's given life to us and we belong to him. And instantaneously, there is that bond that, that we belong to him. Now, what you're going to see as we get into the passage, right? That, that not everybody necessarily wants to belong to him. He belongs to us in the sense that he realizes that he's the life giver, but we don't always want to love him back. And you see that in the passage here where it says this, and let me read again from verse 37. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not have it, but you were unwilling. So Jesus is telling us that he has longed to gather us to himself. Now, again, I realize here's the people of Israel, but let's include us all in my conversation today. That is the desire of God to gather us all to himself. And yet um, they are unwilling. So you ask yourself, how can you say no to the love of God? As a child growing up in a home, how could you say no to the love of a mother? Um, moms aren't perfect, but I think they get it right a lot. And generally, they, they act in, in, in the good of their children. They act in the good of their home. I mean, that's, that's, that's what they want. They want love and peace and safety in the home. And for a child to reject that, we see that as, as somewhat strange. Now, we know that that happens. We know that that happens. And, and it happens in the world in the sense of people who have uh, opportunity to experience the love of God find themselves that they don't always want that, right? They, they kind of push God away. Oh, maybe God loves me, but, but I'm not really interested in serving God. Maybe God has revealed himself to me. Uh, but I'm not really interested in God. Maybe God has revealed himself to my family, but I'm not really interested in God. Now, remember this, that the God has been covenant with the people of Israel for thousands of years by this time. I mean, this has been going on a long time. Israel knows who God is. God knows who Israel is. They are not strangers. God has reached out countless times in, in many different ways through the prophets in all kinds of extraordinary manners, but, but the people are not interested. And, and even though the love of God is absolutely amazing and wonderful and sacrificial, there are still people that say no to that, just like there are kids that grow up in a home and say no to the love of their parents. It's extraordinary. We don't always understand it. Sometimes, and most times, it's, it's just little things. It's a little bit of rebellion. It's, it's about growing up and, and trying to, you know, uh, gain your independence. You know, those things. Those are the normal things. But sometimes there's extraordinary acts of misbehavior and disobedience. And we would say, well, why would a child spurn their parents' love? Why would they wander away from that? God is saying to the, the people of Israel, when I love you so much, why would you turn your backs on, on me? And, and he mentions this line here that I haven't talked about. You who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. Now, if you don't know the Bible very well, you, you don't know exactly what that means. So let me explain that to you. In what we call our, our Old Testament, from Genesis to Malachi, there's all of those books in there. There's 39 books. And for most of those 39 books, there are pictures, uh, stories where God is reaching out to the people of Israel. They are his people, the apple of his eye. And he is trying to keep them on the straight and narrow, trying to keep them devoted to him and, and not to chase after other idols and false gods and those kinds of things and bring harm to themselves while they're doing that. And so God sends the prophets. He sends these people that are mentioned here, you who kill the prophets and those sent you. And those are all examples of, of God sending people to restore Israel to himself. And they have rejected just about everybody that he has sent. And now here's Jesus, the last big sin, God in the flesh, and they reject him too. 
And yet, even though God knows that they reject, they've rejected the prophets and that they've rejected Jesus, and that's happening in real time at that time when Jesus is saying this, God still has this amazing love. But despite the amazing love of God, some people are still very difficult to reach. Even in our homes, despite the amazing love of parents, some of the kids sometimes are a challenge to reach. But, but what do we do? What do we do? Well, we understand this, that despite the fact that there are people that will reject God, or at least it seems like at this moment they reject God, or kids that will rebel in the home, God shows us in this passage that he has unbelievable patience. Just like in our homes growing up, we saw in our parents sometimes unbelievable patience. God has unbelievable patience despite in our homes and despite in society, there is an unwillingness to surrender to his love. And so he says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He, he talks about the fact that he has sent prophets and others to them to, to, to bring them back to the straight and, and narrow. Uh, but he is, he is unwilling to break off the relationship. He says, you may be unwilling to accept me. You may be unwilling to accept those that I've sent to you. But because I love you so much, I'm going to lay down my life for you. Now, it doesn't say that right there, but we're in, we're in Matthew 23. We know that this is about to happen. And God's going to give it all. He, he's going to do everything. Even though there's been rejection after rejection through the millennia, God is going to do it all. And there's going to be this last wonderful demonstration of his love and his grace as his son willingly goes to the cross to give his life, to reconcile sinful humankind to himself. I mean, that is the amazing love of God, right? That he is willing to go to the nth degree to create some kind of pathway back to himself. And so we see that amazing love of God and we see that modeled in our homes where as parents, we are willing to do that as well. Whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes. How many moms and dads have spent hours not only agonizing over children that, uh, you know, rebel, children that weren't, won't serve God, but, but hours, countless hours praying for them and just bringing their kids and the names of their kids before the throne of God, you know, seeking God's grace and God's providence and God's deliverance in our lives when our kids have done some really crazy things that, uh, you know, breaks our heart, but there are kids, right? So we can't let them go. They can break our hearts, but we cannot let them go because they're ours. God sees this in, in the world today where there's rampant sin and rebellion and disobedience. I mean, people are doing whatever they can, right? To, to turn away from God. And yet God would cry out to all of us by name, O oh Brent, O oh Brent, or insert your name there. Like he just cannot let us go because he loves us so much. And that's the kind of love that we want to model as parents or particularly as moms today, right? Whether it's for our kids or our grandkids or our great grandkids, there's just this heart that wants to love them and make sure that they're on the right path and they're serving God. And we see this here. There are a number of passages and I, and I have some of them here. I'm not going to read them all, but there are a number of passages here that talk about this, this love, this protection that God wants to provide. Let me read this one from Psalm 57 and verse 1. Be gracious to me, O God, be gracious to me, for my soul takes refuge, my, my soul takes refuge in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge until destruction passes by. Psalm 57 and 1. And in the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge. Psalm 61 and 4. Let me take refuge in the shelter of your wings. There are a number, and I have them in my notes. I'm not going to share all of them, but I have them in my notes. But there's a number of them that are there that tell us about God wanting to bring us under the shadow, under the protection of his wings. It says it numerous times in the Psalms. And there's this wonderful message of his great love for people 
despite their history of rejecting him. In our homes, sometimes despite our history of rejecting the love of our parents and the love of God, there is that grace, there is that patience, there's that perseverance in prayer because we want to see our kids serve him. And we pray and we mourn for our kids sometimes. And we, again, we call them by name. It's not, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, but it's, oh, John, John, or oh, Mary, Mary, or, or whatever the name is, because there is a love that just cannot let them go. And so despite God's un- amazing love and despite his unbelievable patience, there is still an unwillingness of some to serve him. But we also have to understand that for those that choose to reject God, just like the people of Israel are here in Jerusalem, we have to understand that there are consequences to that. Let me read on here. It says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who were sent to you, how often I've longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks, but you were not willing. Look at verse 38. Look, your house to you is left desolate. So I I thought about that passage, verse 38, and it just reminded me that when we When we reject God, when we reject the love of the Father, uh, we put ourselves in a place like Israel did where the house is left desolate. In other words, uh, the house here, meaning the people of Israel and their kingdom, their nation, that it's going to be wiped out. The Romans are coming. For us, it, it talks about our life being subjected to destruction. When we reject the love of God, when we reject the love of godly parents that are trying to steer us, you know, towards God and towards God's word, the Bible, when they're trying to direct us towards righteousness, when we rebel against that, whether it happens at a young age or a little bit older, when we say we want nothing to do with God, we're not interested in God, we open ourselves up to our house becoming desolate. We begin to make choices and and act on things and make decisions that bring pain and suffering to our lives. And the last thing God wants for you is to bring pain and suffering into your lives, to self-inflict that. And we do that when we reject God. Look, you don't have to go out and kill somebody. You don't have to go out and rob a bank to bring pain and suffering into your life. Just by rejecting God, by rejecting his word, by making day-to-day decisions that have no God factor in it at all, that don't take into account, is this something that God would want me to do? Is this good for me? Is this good for my relationships? I mean, in all the aspects of my life, just saying no to God brings desolation into our lives. Now, this doesn't happen all of the time, but it certainly happens regularly enough where I am talking with a parent that is sharing with me about a decision or decisions that their kids have made and the absolute devastation they brought to their lives. And, and here's the thing, mom, sometimes it's a mom, sometimes it's a dad, has already talked to them about this as they were growing up, pointed them in the right direction, tried to lay the biblical foundation, encouraged them to the house of the Lord, to spiritual principles that would build a good house. And the kids have rejected that. And what happens as life goes on? The house is left desolate. So let me wrap this up for you. What can we learn from, from the love of Jesus? How can we you know, translate that into Mother's Day in, and into our home life? First of all, understand this, is that in those words, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you see the heart of God there. Now, you might have to dig into it, and if you read it quickly, it might fly by you, but I hear the heart of God there. That even in the midst of a people that are rejecting him at that moment, that he loves them. And he, he wants to gather them under his wings and protect them and let them know that there's a better way and there's a better life. Just like parents would do that to their kids. We're here for you. We love you. I guess you could say we know what's best, you know, at a certain age for a while at least. But, but just live under our house, live under our roof, live under our wings, live under our protection. Let us shelter you. Let us teach you. Let us instruct you. And then obviously there's time to go out into the world, but going out into the world equipped, 
that there is this love of God that he puts into the hearts of a mom or he puts in the hearts of parents to take care of their kids. There's nothing like it. Like it. And I would encourage all parents, I would encourage all people just to continue to tap into the stream of God's love while you're reading the word, while you're worshiping, that you keep tapping into that stream so that love of God keeps flowing. Understand this, what we've learned from Jesus is not, the love that we give is sometimes rejected, at least for a time. Uh, he loved them passionately, Jesus did, but they rejected him for a time. But he didn't quit loving them. Look, folks, uh, you may have kids right now, or you may have family members, um, maybe peers, that you love and that right now are rejecting your love and rejecting the love of God. Don't give up on them. Keep loving. Keep loving. Um, Jesus sent the prophets or, you know, uh, the Godhead sent the prophets, the Father sent the prophets through the Old Testament, and they rejected one after another. And in fact, they put some to miserable and horrible deaths. But God kept sending his people with the message that he loves them and, and turned back to him. So sometimes, you know, we love passionately with the love of God like Jesus did. And sometimes that love is, is rejected. Don't quit loving. If you've got someone in your heart right now, someone in your life right now that is rejecting your love, is rejecting the love of God, and you've thought about giving up on them, I encourage you today that this is a message to remind you, don't do that. Don't quit on them. And then finally, finally, we, we understand the consequences of, of rejecting the love of God. I think it's important even on Mother's Day to understand this, that there are consequences to rejecting the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Love verse 16. You've heard me say that before. But then if you keep reading, it tells us that those that have rejected the Father's love stand condemned already. And we don't want to be like Jerusalem as a group of people that stand condemned already because of their unbelief and because of their disobedience. God has provided us the love, receive the love. In our homes, God has provided us with parents, not always perfect, but to love us and direct us, receive the love, appreciate the home that you have. Create a home like that now if, if you're uh, older and you've got small kids in your homes. Create that kind of environment now because you understand this. If you don't do that, the house will return to us desolate. We won't have the spiritual foundation. We won't have the love of God. We won't have the peace of God. We won't have the safety of God. We will be like chicks running around in a barnyard where there are all kinds of predators and there will be nobody and nothing to protect us. Satan will get the best of us. Uh, friends that aren't good for us will get the best of us. Decisions based on worldly principles will get the best of us. And we're going to end up turning our life upside down, harming ourselves and maybe even harming others. So God is there. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, insert your name. Um, he loves you and he hasn't given up on you. God has tried to gather you under the shelter of his wings for a long time. Maybe you've been rejecting him. Don't reject him any longer. It's never too late to turn to him and receive his love again. It's never too late to repent and be restored. It's never too late to be gathered under his wings. Mother's Day is a wonderful day to celebrate not just the love of a mom, Mother's Day is a wonderful day to celebrate the love of God that is expressed in our homes. So today, if you're celebrating Mother's Day this afternoon at the close of this message, celebrate God's love today at your lunch and dinner tables and pray for the lost and pray for the rebellious and pray for the wanderers because God says to them how I would long for you to return to me and how I'd long to gather you under my wings. Let me pray for you today. Father in heaven, I pray for each home. Lord, for the moms today especially, we thank you for the love of our mothers. We thank you that it is often well expressed uh, in, in meaningful ways that please you, that it reflects your love because that's what we want it to do. We pray for homes that know the love and the peace of God and we thank you for them. But especially today, we pray for those that are turning away from God or rebelling against God. We pray for those kids, those loved ones that have been saying no to you. We are reminded today the love of the Father's heart, and He reaches out to them again, and He's reaching out through us. Help us to never give up until they've been gathered 
to his wings. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Have a great mom's day. All the best.